हे बडीज हाउ यू ऑल डूइंग सो होप यू ऑल आर इन बेस्ट ऑफ योर हेल्थ सो हाउ वॉज योर फर्स्ट चैप्टर बायोटेक्नोलॉजी प्रिंसिपल एंड प्रोसेस हैव यू सीन दैट समरी सीरीज इफ नॉट प्लीज वॉच दैट समरी सीरीज बिफोर लुकिंग एट दिस सेशन विच इज बायोटेक्नोलॉजी एंड इट्स एप्लीकेशन बिकॉज यू नो बो दीज टॉपिक्स दे आर इंटर रिलेटेड टू ईच अदर नाउ this particular topic or this chapter is all about the application of different tools of biotechnology for our benefit either we talk about for the production of uh, you know the antibiotics or for the production of uh, you know organisms for the genetically modification for made formation of various crops we have used biotechnology in various ways so today we will be talking about their application that means the tools which we have studied in the first chapter earlier chapter now we'll be talking about their application right so hope all my students are ready so let's quickly complete this chapter now first application there are various applications of biotechnology first is therapeutics therapeutics second is diagnostic third is genetically modified crop for agriculture now we have modified crops for the agriculture purposes so that our crops can be pest resistant insect resistant or higher productivity is there in uh, in our uh, you know plants processed food yes here also biotechnology is used bio remediation waste material the energy production for all these we have a uh, you know biotechnology plays a huge role chalo now <clears throat> your your ncert says there are three critical research areas of biotechnology let's have a look so the first is providing the best catalyst in the form of improved organism usually a microbe or a pure enzyme now what they are talking about is whenever we are using a micro whenever we are doing any things any uh, you know modification in recombinant dna technology what we want first of all and what we want to research on that is the catalyst which catalyst are we working on that means we are talking about that organism which organism do we need to modify so that is the thing providing the best catalyst providing the best microorganism in the form of improved organism usually a microbes or a pure enzyme right which we consider that we we can easily modify them next is creating an optimal condition through engineering for a catalyst to act then we create a particular condition so that our either it is our cell or it is a catalyst so that they can function creating optimal condition for our catalyst to act second point whatever points guys i am mentioning everything is there in your ncert next is downstream processing once the catalyst has function we have provided them uh, you know the ample nutrient um, the conditions they are also fine now it's time to extract our product because why did we modify that product why did we modify that catalyst we modified for our own benefit only so that we can get a particular product here also downstream processing is done and this downstream processing is to purify the protein or the organic compound which we were looking for so these are the three critical areas of research now first we are going to start with biotechnology application in agriculture why this came into existence what was the requirement of biotechnology in agriculture the first is agrochemical based agriculture see listen very carefully if we talk about the population and if we compare the population to that of the demand population is very 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 high and so the demand is also very high whereas the supply is very less so scientists they were working in this manner so that there should be a balance between a supply and the demand the first step which they followed was a agrochemical based agriculture yes this increased the productivity but there was a enormous use of pesticides and herbicides because herbicides and pesticides we were using so there were some negative impacts also the production was high the contribution to the green revolution of this agrochemical based agriculture was huge better agri uh, irrigation practices was also the one contributing to the green revolution yes it was there but they were having a kind of residual effect on the society 
now the second ap application was on the egg organic agriculture organic agriculture that means use of the manure right use of the organic fertilizer for the overall production of a plant so here organic agriculture came into existence organic agriculture here people are more into organic agriculture because their pesticides are not used they do not have any residual effect now the third is genetically engineered crop based agriculture though the contribution towards a green revolution of the genetically engineered crop was very less because there are various issues which are associated with it with time not only the genetic modification but yes with time many things came in into uh, you know the the world the somatic hybridization the tissue culture method also came into existence so these are the different ways by which the you know green evolu uh, uh, you know the production was increased but overall contribution of agrochemical based agriculture and the second one that is a better irrigation practices that contributed a lot in the overall production but still the as per the population the again the supply was again very less uh, if we compare to that of the demand so we have today is the biotechnology recombinant dna technology in agriculture now <coughs> plants bacteria fungi animal whose gene have been altered by manipulation are called as genetically modified organism now earlier we were talking about there are you know genetically modified organism genetically modified organism so what's actually a definition of a genetically modified organism that means we have you know uh, organisms whose genetic composition we have manipulated either it is plants bacteria fungi or the animal we call them genetically modified organism because we are only talking about the genetically modified plants so we are talking about now why they are useful why these came into uh, the, the that particular time period where you know the demand was really very high so gm plants have been useful in many ways genetic modification has now made crops more tolerant to abiotic stress will this increase the productivity definitely so they made the crop tolerant to abiotic stress either it is cold drought salt or the heat plants nothing will happen to the plant we have reduced the resilience on the chemical pesticide right overall total reliance on the you know uh, the pesticide that is also reduced so with time we have produced the pest resistant crops also help to reduce post harvest loss increased efficiency of mineral usage by the plant this prevent early uh, early exhaustion of the fertility of the soil enhanced nutritional value of the food very important guys this can be asked in a three marker what is the importance of genetically modified crops abiotic resistant crop good nutrition value now they were pest resistant so overall the uh, like dependency on uh, the pesticide insecticide reduced post harvest loss was also reduced nutritional content was increased uh, you know uh, next uh, what else yes increase the mineral efficiency so that even when a small minerals they are present in the soil plants can easily grow now in that respect the first genetically modified crop is a bt cotton bt cotton what is this bt cotton let's talk about it so there was a story which scientist got to know so there was a bacteria i'll write down everything i'll explain everything so there was a bacteria and that bacteria name was bacillus thuringiensis and when scientists they were working on it they realized that they were producing some toxin which are the bt toxin bt toxin and these bt toxins they infect badly lepidopteran coleopteran and dipterans they can affect badly lepidopteran coleopteran and the dipteran lepidopteran the examples which are mentioned in the ncrt is the tobacco bud worm and the rv worm coleopteran is a beetle in the dipteran it is the flies and flies and mosquito mosquito they saw okay this much property is there in this bacteria then they saw what is the action behind it so whenever these toxin they are in 
uh, taken up by the uh, you know the you know insects and lepidopteran dipteran etc they <coughs> actually these bt they produce some toxins and these toxins they are inactive right they produce inactive toxin but as insect engulf this this inactive toxin is converted into active to active toxin and once we have the active toxin the active toxin will go to the gut they will cause perforation in the gut due to which the insect will die right so scientists thought let's introduce this gene into the plant and the plant which they used was the cotton plant because if i talk about the cotton was badly affected by the corn borer this was badly affected by the ball worm so scientists they were worried about it so they thought let's take out the gene who was producing this inactive toxin and this inactive toxin gene let's introduce into the cotton so the name of this gene is a cry gene what's the name of this gene cry gene cry this was introduced into the cotton here different variants of the cry genes are there which are effective against different variety of insects for example cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab they can control cotton ball worm and when cry 1 ab was introduced they can control the corn borer are you getting this point very 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 important if you are appearing for neat many time this question has been asked now whatever data guys i am giving you they are from your ncert only please remember both of this clear so this is how they produced but today not only the bt cotton today we have introduced this cry gene into the soya bean into the to tomato into the potato into the beans yes successfully we have transferred this gene and all thanks to the biotechnology specifically the recombinant dna technology the tools which were required we have already studied in the previous chapter now we are just talking about the procedure now what else there is another example given in the ncert that is a nematode resistant tobacco plant now here the technique which was used was rna interference so what is a rna interference rna interference means silencing of a mrna we are silencing an mrna by binding to a double stranded dna if we bind a double stranded dna to the rna the rna will be silenced right now when was this used a tobacco you know to talk about the overall contribution of tobacco in the world india plays a great role in that scientist uh, you know farmer observed that tobacco not even tobacco in fact in the rice also the crop was badly damaged by a nematode because there is a nematode melidogyne incognita melidogyne incognita feed on the roots of tobacco plant and it can cause a serious damage and the technique which was used was rna interference see how so here this is the gene which was used right this gene this is a dna this dna comes from the melidogyne incognita right this dna was art artificially synthesized you can see this dna was introduced in introduced in plants this dna was introduced in plants which plant tobacco plant right so here what happens is here it lead to the formation of double stranded mrna what does it form double stranded rna because here this was introduced in this way that the one both the strands they you know transcribe and both of them they produce the rna as dna was complementary to each other so the rna will also be complementary to each other so what will happen both will form the uh, uh, rna rna will bind together it will form the double stranded rna here one enzyme was used which was a dicer dicer so what we get is small interfering rna what is this small interfering rna now now after the attachment of this to the helicase and lies it lead to the formation of a risk complex i'm just drawing one only 
so this will form a risk complex what is risk risk is rna induced silencing complex rna induced silencing complex risk was used right so first the dna was introduced into the plant in the plant this thing will happen now what will happen suppose a insect will come and insect will bite this now insect when consume this plant now when insect will consume this plant what will happen this rna will bind to the dna and what it will lead to it will lead to the silencing of this mrna so that means in the body of a insect definitely there will be formation of an rna we are targeting the rna which is vital for them so this is this will go and this will bind to the rna so this will lead to silencing of of mrna of mrna yes so this is a nematode resistant plant have we produced any other plant also yes with time guys we have produced golden rice as well golden rice and in case of the golden rice here the gene for the beta carotene is present which is a precursor of vitamin a vitamin a pro vitamin a is present in golden rice you know vitamin a deficiency can lead to the night night blindness but now this can be cured here we have produced a flavor saver variety of tomato where we have silenced the gene of poly galacto uranase clear poly galacto uranase poly galacto uranase is a enzyme which leads to softening of fruit now if this is uh, you know it helps in the digestion of uh, pectin so it leads to the softening of fruit you know the tomatoes tomato normally they soften after some time but when this gene was silenced there was no softening of the uh, you know uh, the tomato no softening means overall increase in the shelf life let's talk about the biotechnology application in case of medicine first application was with respect to the pcr so what is a pcr pcr is a polymerase chain reaction polymerase chain reaction and this polymerase chain reaction helps in amplification of dna there are various you know with the biotechnology we have this pcr today with us and with the help of pcr we can detect genetic disorder what can we detect genetic disorder we can easily detect small amount of nucleic acid in blood of nucleic acid in blood yes this is also possible for example whether a person is hiv positive or not if person is hiv positive the, uh, so that means the virus is there and how can we detect it with the help of a pcr we'll take out a blood we will amplify the uh, genetic material and then if they'll, we'll find the hiv genome is there so definitely it is positive then third one that is for the cancer detection cancer detection we can easily detect what kind of you can say changes are there in the nucleotide right by looking at their dna we can easily detect that this particular change is there in the nucleotide so cancer detection maybe it plays a great role now what is the autoradiography 
ऑटो रेडियोग्राफी में यूज ऑफ यूज ऑफ नोन रेडियो लेबल्ड रेडियो लेबल्ड प्रोब एंड वेन यू विल एक्सपोज टू आई आई शो यू हाउ एक्सपोज टू यू वी रेडिएशन वेन यू विल एक्सपोज दिस टू यू वी रेडिएशन देन दिस विल शो ऑटो रेडियोग्राफी ऑटो रेडियोग्राफी वट विल इज शो ऑटो रेडियोग्राफी आई एक्सप्लेन यू हाउ Now suppose we want to know whether particular mutation has happened in the gene or not. Now this is the gene, and we want to know whether the mutation has happened in this gene or not. What we will take is a probe, right? Probe sequence we know, and we have radio labeled the probe. If probe will go, go, and it will bind to the DNA, so that means no changes in nucleotide is there in the in the gene. No changes in nucleotide, so that means no no mutation. that means if binding is there if you know the radioactivity is seen with the help of auto radiograph so we'll get to know that means there is no change but when we see the binding is not there if binding in is not there so that means they are not complementary that means some kind of changes has been hap happened in the dna so probe are the single stranded dna strand next is elisa now what do i mean by elisa elisa is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay Enzyme link immuno sorbent assay. Enzyme link immuno sorbent assay. Now enzyme link immuno sorbent assay. This is important for the detection of for the detection of small amount small amount of antigen in blood even when a small amount of antigen is present if we will do the elisa in elisa antigen antibody reaction occur we will add antibody if antigen antibody reaction occur that means a positive elisa is there right clear so this is based on the antigen antibody reaction now let's move on to the next that is a gene therapy gene therapy means replacement of a faulty gene this was done in the case of a patient named ashanti de silva in the year 1990 this was very firstly done gene therapy so gene therapy means it means what replacement of faulty gene replacement of faulty gene faulty gene we have replaced how is it possible there was a patient of a skid severe combined immunodeficiency severe combined immuno deficiency this was the patient what are the symptom of this in this case there is a ada deficiency adenosine deaminase deficient this is a gene which produces the ada gene is not there so ada is adenosine deaminase so that means these are the individual where this particular enzyme will not be there and what is the importance of this enzyme this is important for so this is the one which help in proliferation of and maturation of lymphocyte that means in this individual because ada is not there so person will be immunocompromised so what are the different steps steps first wbc is collected what we will do we will collect the wbc of patient 
what we will do is we will introduce ada gene in wbc and when we introduce ada gene in wbc basically this is done with the help of a vector and in human the vector a virus that is a retrovirus disarmed retroviruses are used they are used as a vector now then reintroduction of of ada gene wbc in patient's body so what we do is first we take out wbc we introduce ada gene and then we again transfer those ada gene containing wbc back into the patient so that means uh, adenosine deaminase will start forming but yes this is not a permanent cure why why this is not a permanent cure this is not a permanent cure because the wbcs are wbcs are not immortal not immortal because they are not immortal so we have to continuously do this again and again so this is the gene therapy chalo next we have to talk about application in case of medicine with respect to insulin insulin production insulin production <clears throat> insulin there is a company by the name of eli lily eli lily they have produced artificial insulin or most specifically i can write down recombinant insulin recombinant insulin every year thousands of patients they suffer from diabetes mellitus and they require injection of insulin earlier this insulin was taken from was taken from cattles slaughtered cattle was this but this lead to unnecessarily immune response because they are foreign so this is the unnecessary immune response what is the use of insulin insulin lowers the blood glucose level insulin lowers the blood glucose level so artificial that means recombinant insulin is was produced if i talk about the structure of insulin structure of insulin insulin exists in two form one a chain b chain and the third one c chain is present this is considered as a pro insulin pro insulin is inactive form of insulin so where this is a a chain this is a b chain and this is a c chain whenever its function starts in the body they form the this structure now this is the insulin mature form of insulin they have the structure very much similar to this because here the bond is present which is a disulfide bond here also disulfide bond is present clear now a chain is made up of 21 amino acid 21 amino acid and b chain is made up of 30 amino acid how many 30 amino 21 and 30 amino acid this is a structure of a insulin this is a pro insulin and this is a insulin now what eli lily company did they have produced a recombinant insulin so what they have done is they have separately separately isolated a and b chain 
15 right now separately introduced introduced these genes in vector next is separately introduced vector in host cell vectors are vehicle in host cell host cell are the e coli cell host cell are the e coli cell are the e coli cell then culturing and downstream processing downstream processing say what we have got is a chain amino acid a chain peptide and b chain peptide Both were artificially attached together in laboratory and now the mature insulin is ready. This is the step of the production of recombinant insulin. Separately isolated NMB B gene, separately introduced these genes into the vector, separately introduced vector in the host cells, culturing downstream processing what we have is A chain peptide and B chain peptide. Both were joined together artificially in the lab and when they were into, uh, joined in the lab what we have is the insulin insulin is ready now because this is produced because we have isolated the gene from a human body only so unnecessarily immune response will not be generated so, now let's talk about the transgenic animals now what are these transgenic animals transgenic animals are those animals where we have manipulated we have uh, or change the genome of an organism. So these are the transgenic organisms. Animals whose genome has been altered by introduction of a foreign gene by manipulation. With the help of recombinant DNA technology, we have introduced a gene. That is a transgenic uh, animals. What are different transgenic animals today we have produced? We have transgenic rat, rabbit, pigs, sheep, cow and fish. And if I talk about more than 90, in fact, 95% of the transgenic animal today we have is the mice, transgenic mice. Now, question comes, what are the benefits of the transgenic animals? What are the different benefits? Why? Why do we produce the transgenic animals? Transgenic animals are produced so that we can study the normal physiology and development. If I have introduced an X gene, their physiology, the development of that gene, the expression of that gene, I can easily study in a transgenic organism for the normal physiology and development. Second thing is to study the contribution of gene in the development of disease. If it is a disease containing gene, we can get to know what are the different physiological effects is it going to produce. Third is to produce a biological product, whether we can get some biological products or not. Chalo. Yes, today with the transgenic animal, this is very much possible. Today, human protein, which is the alpha-1 antitrypsin. Alpha-1 antitrypsin is used for the treatment of emphysema. That comes from lung smoking, right? So today we have produced a human protein, which is alpha-1 antitrypsin used for treatment of the emphysema, product for the treatment of PKU and the cystic fibrosis. Alpha-1 ant antitrypsin. That means we have introduced the gene of alpha-1 antitrypsin into the model organism. Now they are used as a factory and they are producing the alpha-1 antitrypsin. Next is in 1997, a cow was produced which is a rosy. First transgenic cow is a rosy. Now if I talk about their milk, milk is rich in protein. Milk is rich in protein. That is 2.4 gram per liter and it is considered that for a developing baby, if mother is giving this milk as compared to a normal cow milk, yes, we cannot compare this milk to the mother's milk, but I am saying the normal cow milk, this will be more beneficial. 
Vaccine the safety. Today we know for the vaccine safety, we use uh, different organisms, right? Transgenic mice are used to test vaccine for the safety before they are used for the human. Chemical safety testing, uh, testing that is a toxicity testing. With this, we make these organisms more prone, more vulnerable, so that e each and every, you know, the symptom can be easily detected. Now, <coughs> Let's talk about ethical issues. Today we have produced organisms whose genetic composition is almost manipulated, completely changed today we have done. Do we have any ethical issues also related to that? Yes. So the integrity of species in this case is affected. So here to regulate these things, regulate everything that how much level this manipulation is possible, this comes under a, you know, a, a organization that is GEAC. That is Genetic Engineering Approval Committee. This particular committee, so it sets up certain rules that this is how you can manipulate or this is the maximum extent you can manipulate. Genetic modification may cause unpredictable result when organisms are introduced into the ecosystem. Suppose we have in, uh, ca caused a change in the genetic composition and if I have introduced that particular organism into the ecosystem, chances that they can dominate right chances that they can affect the food web so that we do not want right so this is the biggest problem which we face with the uh, you know the these organism indian government has set up an organization like geac genetic engineering approval committee full form is required can be asked in one mark which make decisions about the validity of the gm research and the safety of gm organism for the public services now <laughs> Problems of patent. Unpredictable result may be observed by the introduction of these organisms into the natural ecosystem that I have told you. Many indigenous varieties are claimed by the multinational companies at their own inventors. Once again. Now first let's talk about patent. What are the patent? Patents are the rights given to an organism or a person given to a multinational company for the no noble procedure for you know procedure thing microorganism they have discovered so if you have done something novel you can file a patent for that you will get a patent you will get a grant if some xyz company is using that particular thing without your approval so it is a crime now if i talk about in world in world, there are various, you know, the problems related to the patents. The one of that problem is Basmati. One of the uh, very important, you know, uh, story behind this is the uh, ba Basmati rice. We know the Basmati rice we are using from ages. Their aroma, their texture, we are, they are present in, in fact, in the stories also. They are present uh, also, you can say, in the uh, various poems also, they are a part of it. But with time, what they have done is, what US has done is, they have created a new variety of Basmati. And they said it is a novel thing. But no, we are using this Basmati from ages. So they cannot file a patent for Basmati, which is indigenous to our country. Same case happened with the neem, regarding the antibacterial property of the neem. Same happened with respect to the turmeric also. They said that they have discovered that a neem is rich in anti neem is having the antibacterial property, or the turmeric is, is having antibacterial property. But we are using neem from ages. We are using turmeric, turmeric also from ages. So let's talk about this. Many indigenous variety are claimed by the multinational companies as their own invention. A new variety of basmati was claimed by the American, American company through the patenting. This new variety has actually derived, derived from the Indian farmer by crossing the Indian basmati with the semi-dwarf variety. Similarly, neem and turmeric, which have been used for the ages in Indian medicine, are also a matter of dispute for the patent right. Clear? So, those things we know that these are the patents which we... Oh, you know, patents are basically the right. So first, you should know the definition of a patent. Now, what are the different problems of the patent? That also you can write down. Three are there, uh, which your NCIT talks about. 
one is basmati second is turmeric and third one is a neem as a directa indica now what is a biopiracy biopiracy patent is one is getting the authorization for using or you know i am the owner of that biopiracy means if use of these bio resources by multinational company without proper authorization it is the use of bio resources by the multinational company and their organization without proper authorization from the countries or the people in india parliament has recently introduced a second amendment of the indian patent bill to deal with such issue that's it so for this particular you know topic first you should know the ethical issues all five points you should know normal physiology and development development of disease clinical trials vaccine safety and next is for the bio resources this five points should be there in your mind can be asked in three marks or a four marks next thing definition of bio patent definition of bio piracy many times this has been asked in one or the two marker so get ready regarding the e coli many times three marker has been asked where you have to tell how the insulin was produced with the help of a recombinant dna technology so that can also be asked other questions like the beta carotene gene was introduced and then then we have is a golden rice today with us polygalacto uranase flavor flavor variety of tomato again a one marker very important mar one marker from this chapter another thing from this chapter is the you know the nematode resistant plant and also we have produced the you know the you know uh, you know what do we call bt cotton right so these are the questions which are frequently asked from this chapter i don't want any one of you to miss this so have a nice day guys this was all about the summary of this chapter detail definitely we'll be discussing soon so till then have a nice day if you feel any problem any issue please write down in the comment section till then take care bye bye everyone thank you so much